into it. And I mean, I just fell in love with it. So before I really get started with this, um, first of all, if people can type in what what kind of instruments do you currently trade the most? Is it stocks or options or futures or Forex? I just want to get a general sense of what people trade here. Anyone? Futures and options, ES, stock, some options. Okay. Are there, um, can I get it just to type in a Y or an N, a yes or a no? How many people currently trade with Nadex? No? Yes? No? TY? No? Okay, so some ha some have it and some don't. I just wanted to just sort of check the uh, familiarity with the um, with the room. So what I'm going to talk today is I'm going to do a quick overview about what Nadex is. I'm going to show you the platform, um, and then I'm going to show you some high high probability strategies. Uh, I've got two of them that are um, uh, fairly unique, I would say, and I have Tom Busby at DTI to credit a lot for one of them. So with that said, I'm going to get started. First, the obligatory disclaimer. Um, binary options involves risk of loss. It's not suitable for all investors. You should carefully consider whether trading is suitable for you in light of your circumstances, knowledge, and financial resources. And always remember that past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. Well, one of the cool things about Nadex is you always know what your risk and your loss is going to, what your reward and your loss is going to be. You can't get surprised. You can't have a trade run away from you. So the upside to that is you can't have something run away from you. The downside to it is your profit is also capped per, uh, per contract traded. So binary options have been called yes or no propositions. Each trade has a maximum value of $100 per contract traded. And that means the absolute most you can win or lose is $100. Um, the probabilities or the market determines the spread between profit and loss. So if you think that gold is going to be tr uh, trading above 1250 and the market agrees with you, and, they and the market determines that there's a 70% chance that that's going to happen, in all likelihood, if you place a market order, your risk is going to be $70 to make a $30 profit on a high probability trade. Conversely, if you believe that gold is going to go below 1250 and most of the market disagrees with you on that proposition, you could wind up risking $30 to make 70 on a lower probability trade. And all trades are basically what Nadex is doing is, as an exchange is just matching a buyer and a seller. So a little bit about Nadex, it's the North American Derivatives ex Exchange. Um, they are headquartered in Chicago. They're subject to regulatory oversight by the CFTC. And that's important because there are a lot of binary options outfits overseas, most of them um, uh, headquartered in places like Cyprus, and, and they're not regulated. It's like, it's like going to a casino. The, um, you're betting against the house. You're not being matched with, with, a, um, with a buyer and a seller. And when that happens, the odds can be stacked against you. Um, to trade Nadex, you have to be a legal US uh, citizen at this point in time. So because Nadex is federally regulated and they do not take any positions in any of the markets traded on there, you get full transparency. You're not betting, you're not betting against the house you're basically being matched with, against somebody that has an opposing opinion to you on any particular trade. Um, with Nadex, you don't trade through a broker. You, your orders are placed directly on the exchange. And so you don't pay broker commissions. What you are going to pay is exchange fees, which I'll discuss in just a second. Okay, 
So binary options, how do they work? It's very simple. <clears throat> Simply what you want to do is you need to have a strong sense of where a market is going. You need to know whether it's going to be going up or whether it's going to be going down. And you want to have some good strategies in place for doing that. Once you have a general sense of where a market's going to go, you have a number of options you can do. You have nine Forex pairs that you can trade. You have uh, a lot of the major indices, uh, the E-minis, um, the DAX, um, the, 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 the Nikkei, um, and then in commodities, a lot of the majors, gold, crude oil. Um, they have some of the ag, soybean, corn, silver, copper. So there's a lot of uh, instruments that you can choose from. Then what you're going to do is you're going to take a look at what do you want the expiration of your contract to be. Nadex works in defined time periods. So you can choose an hourly strike price, uh, hourly expiration, daily expiration, or weekly expiration. You have a lot of um, contracts that you can take. And um, then what you want to do is determine whether you want to buy or sell that particular uh, strike price, uh, the number of contracts you want to trade, to decide what price you are willing to pay for your um, binary option, and then you place your order directly on the exchange. Now, once you've placed your order on the exchange, if everything is running fine, you can let it run to expiration and get your full profit. However, if the trade is coming against you, and you feel like you're gonna, uh, gonna be on the losing end of a proposition, you can close out your position early and maybe minimize, minimize some profits or minimize your losses on the transaction. So how much does all this cost? First of all, you can go to nadex.com and download a two week free demo of the product. It'll fund you, it'll be funded with $25,000 in play money and it is fully functional. Um, the minimum you need to fund an, an ADEX account with is $100. Um, that's bare bones minimum. I recommend about $500. Um, your exchange fees are $0.90 cents per contract per, per side. So if you open one contract successfully, you'll be charged $0.90 cents for opening the contract. And, if, and when it settles in the money, you'll be uh, charged another $0.90 cents or $1.80 round trip. If you open up a contract and it's not successful and out of the money, you will not be charged the um, 90 cents on the back end. You'll, you will, you'll only be charged the 90 cents for opening up the account with that particular transaction. Quick summary. Um, binaries are just based on a simple yes or no proposition. The market, the market is gonna go up or down relative to a strike price. Um, you have a limited trade risk. You always know what your risk and your reward is before you place your trade. You have um, short-term expirations. You can trade multiple times within the day on the markets you like to trade, or you can choose a weekly expiration if that's more your uh, style. Um, you can't get stopped out in Nadex, which is a really, really nice um, um, advantage to this. Um, you don't worry, you don't play stop losses. You're basically saying the market's going to go up or down within a defined time period, whether it's at the end of next hour or in a couple hours from now or the end of the day. In between there, if the market shoots way up or shoots way down, it's going to do what it's going to do. Ultimately, if you're going to be in the money, it has to settle in agreement with uh, your proposition. And finally, I like it because it's regulated. Uh, and subject to oversight by the CFTC. Um, they, Nadex is, is really subject to stringent oversight and regulation, which makes them be transparent. And your funds are held in a segregated account. So it's, um, and their customer service, from my experience, is tremendous. I call them, I usually get an answer on one ring, and they solve my problem. Okay, so I'm going to go and take a quick look at Nadex. And get out of this. This is what you're looking at when you open up uh, when you open up your um, Nadex account. You basically on the left hand you have a, a finder. You have the indices uh, up here. Um, you have either spreads that I'll talk a little about a little bit or you have binaries. So for binary options you've got 
the US 500, which is the E mini SP, the, the, the Nikkei, the, the German DAX, which I'll be talking about today, NASDAQ, FTSE, Russell, and, and Dow um, indices that you can uh, trade binary options on. In the Forex pairs, you've got all these ones here the Euro dollar, uh, dollar yen, pound yen. Um, one that I pay particular interest to is the pound dollar, and I have a strategy for that I'm going to talk about today. In commodities, you got copper, gold, silver, corn, soybeans, natural gas, and crude oil. And then finally, something that I haven't even messed with at all, you can actually do um, binary options on news events. If you think you have a knack for how uh, jobless claims are going to wind up coming in the jobless reports, you can actually, um, or with the or Fed funds rate or whatever, you can uh, do something with that. But I, I really don't mess with that at all. Looking up over here, you have a watch list. You can you can populate your own watch list, but you can take a look at say what's happening in the German DAX market. You can pull up the chart for it. And here's the uh, here's the uh, the German DAX today on a five minute chart. So you can I'm going to move this thing to uh, a 15 minute chart. It has a number of indicators you can. I'm going to go back to five just for breaks. This is just showing where the trading day started. I'll go back to the five minute chart just because it looks prettier. And on top of that, you have any kind of indicators that. Um, that you almost want that you can put on top of uh, that. You can take a look at this through the uh, Ichimoku cloud if you want to and sort of divine where you think the market's going to go. You can use Bollinger Bands, MACD, RSI, and just a lot of common indicators that, that you can use for that to help you make decisions. The one, the indicators that I use the most that I'll be talking about a little bit, because I like my charts really clean, is the eight exponential moving average. Change this to eight. I use the 50 day moving average. And I use the stochastic, low stochastic set at 12.33. And to me, that's to me that's just nice and simple. What I like about the um, the um, the eight EMA is that it just tends to hug the market, and every time the market wants to gap away from the from the uh, the uh, eight EMA, or as one speaker calls it, the T line, it's going to come back to the T line. Gaps up over it, comes back up a little bit, back, below it, back. So when I see the market moving forward, if I see a gap up or a gap down away from the T line, I'm I'm getting ready for the for the market to come back to that particular line. The stochastics, um, 80 is oversold, uh, overbought, 20 is oversold. Right now we we just touched the oversold area. It's kind of gapping back down. It's telling me that this market may want to uh, start to uh, move down a little bit, even though it's above this line. If it in the T line, if a candlestick breaks through it in a time period, there, there, there is a decent probability that it's going to continue to move down at least for a few bars. So let's see what else I can show you about Nadex really quickly at a glance. Um, that's pretty much, you can find the market what you want. You can take a look at the charts. And then when you take a look at a particular market, let's see, the the uh, the DAX is trading at 88.88 right now. So I'm going to go back. We thought it was going to move down. So I can go up to the German 30, go for the, go for the daily charts. Oops. Well, that's no fun. Hang on just a second. Adex is telling me. I just need to log in. I've had this. I've had this in up for quite some time. So, sorry about that, folks. 
right, back in business. So going back to where was I? Was it, I was, I was, we were looking at 88, 88. I'm going to look at 4 o'clock. And I've got all these propositions right here. So if I think the market's going to sell below 88, 88, I might just jump up here up to 89.90, open up an order ticket. This is what the order ticket looks like. It's going to, and I say, I want to sell this market below 8900. I click the sell button, one contract. And what it's telling me right here is that if I want this, if I want this, this proposition at market prices, I need to be prepared to risk $60 to make $40. That doesn't work in my risk reward profile. So what I usually do is just amend that ticket. You know, I'll type in, I want to sell this at 60 instead of 40. And now I'm flipping the script. My maximum loss is 40, 60. Take it or leave it. If I place that order, it's gonna be it's gonna be held as a um It's going to be held in the queue as a working order. And what it's going to show me is I've been, I, I, I'm selling this contract at 60. The current market price is 40. And until that marketplace comes up to here, it's going to be a pending order. The minute the market moves in that direction and grabs this, it'll move from a pending to an open position for the, uh, for the 4 o'clock time frame. I'm just going to exit this so I don't have this thing hanging up here as an open order. Okay, so that's a quick that's a quick introduction to uh, to uh, Nadex. And a couple of Nadex re resources. Um, Nadex.com. That's the uh, the official website. They have a lot of information, a uh, nice library on um, how to trade Nadex. They have a lot of PDF files, webinars, archived, everything else. When you open up an, a demo account, you want to go up here where it says trading, demo platform. It couldn't be easier. You'll, put a, you'll just type in a username that could be your first name, whatever is uh, an unused name. First name, last name, telephone, email address. Boom, you're done. Once again, you have to be a U.S. resident to trade made, to trade Madex. I'm sorry, they, they, they've actually updated this. Now it's the uh, now you can be a resident of the U.S., U.S. territories, Canada, or Mexico. So I just learned something. So that's Nadex, pretty easy to get to. Um, Trading Pub also has a lot of uh, articles on in, in webinars on uh, Nadex. So you go up to free education down to Nadex and you'll find a bunch of uh, articles and, uh, and webinars that you can access. And then finally, uh, Colin mentioned that I, um, I publish once a month something called the probability report. And what I have on that particular um, uh, blog is a listing of all of the upcoming uh, uh, Nadex uh, webinars that are going to be coming up, that are going to be hosted by Nadex in the following month. They use, they're usually done every Monday and every Thursday night. A little bit about Nadex. Um, I find an article of the month that I put in there or, or I write one. And then I usually pull a um, pull up a, a video that I found that looks pretty good. and. And then I have some uh, recent Nadex news in the margins. So that's the probability report. And then if I have extra time, I have another blog, uh, blog called The Inquisitive Trader, where I just sort of share my experiences as a newbie getting back into the markets. My trading plan. OK. I, uh, when I got on board with this and started working with Nadex, I decided to fund an account. I opened it up with less than $1,000, so I have a, I'm a small account holder. My daily trading goal is to make $50 a day in profits. And I do that through, you know, I'm going to manage my money well, and I also want to manage risk-reward. 
if I have to risk 70 to make a 30, like that example I talked about earlier, I'm cranky. I mean, it had better be a solid gold, super high probability play. That market has need, needs to be charging like a locomotive, either north or south, for me to take, for me to entertain that type of proposition. If it's one to one where I'm risking 50 to make 50, I'm okay with that, but the plan has got to be a really strong plan with better than 70% probability. If it's uh, one to one and a half, where I'm risking 40 to make 60, I'm pretty happy with that. And if it's one to two or better, I'm very excited. Finally, my rules, I never risk more than 5% of my accounts um, on any transaction. 2% is better. So it's a simple plan. And then, you know, I always want to optimize risk reward. I don't like market orders personally because I feel like I'm just buying something when I could have gotten it for a better price or, you know, if I sell, I want to sell at my price. Um, basically, you're buying the price of someone. If you're buying, you're, you're buying something that someone, is, that's something that someone is willing to sell to you. Uh, if a market order has pro high probability of success, it's also going to re re require greater risk of capital. And with Nadex, since you're dealing with defined time periods, the closer you get to expiration, time decay comes into effect, which can affect the price of a contract. So the closer you are to expiration, the less attractive propositions generally become. Um, the further out you're away from an expiration, the more wiggle room you have to adjust your risk and reward and possibly squeeze a little bit more out of the, prop uh, out of the transaction. The real answer for me is I want to engage the market on my terms, not their terms. And when I do that, it just makes me feel a lot more com um, confident. So earlier when I showed you that trade ticket, that, that, the, the, that order ticket that showed a, a proposition, a market order, it's rare that I take a market order. Um, so oftentimes when that comes up and it says you're gonna risk you know, over one day, uh, 80 to make 20. I don't want that deal. I, I mean, if I like the if I like the idea of selling at that price that, that that enough and I have the day to do it, I'll throw it out as a pending order and flip the script. I'm I risk 20 to make 80, and if it takes, I'm happy. And if not, wasn't meant to be. I have a I have a checklist every evening. I, you know, I want to sort of review how the market was closed, how my trades were. I want to analyze my winners. I want to analyze my losers. But I also want to look for um, the probability of, of the markets that I like to trade. And I'll take a look at, you know, daily, hourly time charts and use the, uh, the, the three indicators I showed you, the eight EMA indicator, the 50-day simple moving average, the slow stochastic set at 12.33. At nighttime, I'm looking for low, reward, low risk high reward setups because the last thing I want to do is go to sleep on a trade where I've risked, where I've risked anywhere near 50-50. That just doesn't make me sleep well. But I, what I may do is find a setup where I'm risking $10 to make 90 or 15 to make 85. And, you know, if it's based on the direction of where I think the market's moving and, and, and it fills, you know, if you're risking 10 to make 90, you only have to be run right one out of 10 times. If you're right two or three times out of 10, you look pretty smart. Also in the evening, I take a look at the Nikkei opportunity, uh, the Nikkei market. Sometimes it behaves itself very nicely and it's in alignment with all my indicators and maybe the Dow had a good day and the Nikkei is following suit and I can find a nice little buy proposition. And by the time I wake in, uh, up in the morning, you know, um, I'm, too, I'm in the money, and it's just a good way to start the day. Um, candlestick pattern analysis, basically that's what I showed you earlier. Um, and I'll get back to this when I go back to, to uh, Nadex. But I used the ADMA, the slow stochastic oscillators at a 12.33. The um, 20, 50, 200 period SMAs I'll pull up. I use the daily charts to make a binary decision. Tomorrow, do I think the market's going to close up or down based upon the, the daily charts? If the candlesticks are above the T line, the market's going to be in an uptrend. If it's above the T line and above the 50 EMA, I'm feeling better about it. Um, if the candlesticks are below the T line or the 80 EMA, 
probably going to be in a downtrend for the following day. And if it's below the 50 EMA as well, I mean the 50-day uh, simple moving average, that just confirms it. Stochastics will, put, will, will confirm to me whether the, whether the marketplace is overbought, oversold, or neutral. So when I wake up in the morning, I live in Austin, Texas, and I usually get up like around 4.30 to 5 o'clock every morning. Fortunately, my wife gets up at the same time, so she can nudge me out of bed. And um, what I want to do at first is check to see if any of my overnight orders have filled. If they haven't, and if they're just hanging out there, I may cancel them. I check the, the, uh, the DAX market. I check the, uh, the British pound US dollar pairing. And then I check the other markets I like to, to look at, the E-mini S&P, uh, gold and crude. And if there's a setup that's in, that, it, that looks like it's in play, I'll engage it on my terms. And what that means is I'll probably place a limit order instead of a market or, uh, order and see if the market pulls back and fills. Okay, this is the 7 a.m. DAC strategy. And I have Tom Busby to credit for this a lot. Tom did a... Um, he did a webinar um, about a month ago that I was listening to, and he had 30 observations. And I think it was observation number five was that the 7 a.m. Um, uh, hourly bar for the DAX will generally set the direction for the DAX for that day. And then he just went on. And I was like, well, wait a second, what are you talking about? That's a binary proposition. If it really does set the direction, this could be great information. So basically, you check the 7 a.m. Uh, Eastern Standard Time um, hourly bar for the DAX market or the bar as it opens, and you're going to move off the opening price of that bar, and I'm going to demonstrate this for you. And if it's moving, uh, you want to find out where the market's going and make your decision based upon that. And the time frame you want to trade in Madex is, is, uh, is the time frame, frame between 7 a.m. Eastern Time and 9 a.m. Eastern Time. And here's how I prep for this thing. I, basically, at 5.30 in the morning Central Time, I'm looking at the, um, at the charts and I'm reviewing where it's, been, where, where it's put, where the charts have been on a daily basis. Um, I take a look at the economic calendar and see if there's any news coming out of, um, out of Germany or Europe that I need to pay special attention to. Um, at a glance, well, the only thing that I noticed that, that's, that's dealing with another one of my strategies is the uh, there was some bearish news from public sector net borrowing in Britain. And coming down further later on today, existing home sales were pretty strong on the U.S. side. And that has a direct relationship on, the, on how the pound-dollar pairing is going to work. Uh, take a look at the daily, hourly, 15-minute charts. The DAX, is, do I think it's going to be up or down based upon where the market's moving and what my indicators have to say? And then I execute. Um, the, in Nadex, the strike prices are at set at 20-point intervals, and I'll show you this. I choose a 7 to 9 a.m. Uh, time period. And right at 7 a.m. Eastern time, particularly if the market's got some momentum going up or down, I want to buy as close to the opening of that, the, that bar as possible if I think the market is going up. And I'm going to find the first strike price that Nadex will give me below the opening price of that candlestick. If I'm selling the, the DAX at that, at that point in time, um, I want to set a strike price that is above the opening price of that, that candlestick. So I'm very much in the money. And if I placed, in a, if I placed a market order right there, Nadex would be telling me, dude, you're going to have to risk $60 to make 40 or you have to risk 70 to 30 to make 30 And my position is <clears throat> nonsense. I'm going to risk 50 to make 50 take it or leave it. So I place a limit order. And typically within that two-hour uh, time frame, like clockwork, the market will retrace, it'll grab my order, and then move in the direction that I want that trade to go. So that's basically it. You look for the direction of the market, you find the opening of the 7 o'clock Eastern hourly bar for the, um, for, the, um, for the DAX. Your expiration is 9 o'clock in the morning, so you're only trading within a two-hour window, and you buy or sell based upon the direction of the market and the opening price of the 7 a.m. bar. 
Sounds pretty simple? Okay, good. Now we're going to play it out. jump over to investing.com because this is a nice little quick chart to see. Here's a chart set up on investing.com. It's the hourly chart for the DAX. And I've got my three indicators I talk about. The T line or the eight exponential moving average. You see how it remarkable move away from it, gap up, gap up away from it, come back, do this. I love this for making decisions. Okay, so <clears throat> All the way up here in the right-hand corner, we have the 7 a.m. bar, and it's a big, big um, bearish bar. Today, this one head faked me, and I actually lost on this transaction. So here I am bragging on a, uh, on a strategy that lost today, but this is what I saw. When I woke up, I took a look at the hourly bar. Well, first the daily bar of this, because I like, daily bar shows that the market is generally down now it's kind of chopping sideways. So there's yesterday's bar, here's today's bar. And looking at that, um, we're below the 50 day moving average. We're not misbehaving. I generally had a sense initially that this thing might be, last night, it was a coin toss. I felt that it might actually go down a little bit. But look down here, the stochastics are kind of nudging it upward. So, I, Last night I'm thinking I need to take a look at this thing in the morning. So go to the go back to the hourlies, and here we are at four, five, six. Nice progression upwards. I'm saying this market is in, in, in a lot of markets were in an uptrend. This thing is going to be in an uptrend. And when the 7 a.m. bar opened, it opened at. 88.59. So it opened up. Now here's the uptrend. It opened up right there, top of the, um, the, the candle. And it looked at the time. Going, let me go down to a 15-minute chart. Okay. It looked at the time like it needed to retrace back to the T line. So I expected a little bit of a retracement and, you know, retrace a little bit more. I'm still not worried because what I was doing, I took that opening price. I thought the market was going to go long based upon that nice little trend. And I went below the T line and I bought at eight, I, I bought right at the bottom of the wick. I bought at, at 8847 to expire at nine o'clock. So it kind of came down, it was down a little bit. And right here, at this point here, where it just fell through the floor, that's when Coca-Cola announced a disappoint, uh, earnings disappointment. And it shot this market way down. And it just couldn't recover. It almost got there. It finished at um, 9 o'clock. It finished at 88.41, or six ticks behind. Had Coke not disappointed like it did and dropped, by the way, this is the biggest drop I've seen in 25 days of testing this. Just a bad day. I was taken out by some bad earnings reports. Had that not occurred, the balance of this chart would have shifted up and I would have been to the good. So I lost a trade today on there. But let's go back another day. So I got a loser there. Let me go to... Let me go back to my hourly chart. Okay, so big loser there. Okay. Here I have here I have a chart that where I, where I'm I'm um, bearish at seven o'clock. I mean, I'm only trading these two these two bars right here. So what I did is. If, it's, if I think the market is going down, which I did, I buy above the strike price, and I found a proposition hanging out up here, took it. The market went down, it retraced, but it never made it back to where I, where I sold the market. So I was to the good there, I was in the money there. Let's go back to the next 7 a.m. time period. 
Okay, it's this one here, we're going to the seven o'clock um, bar, it's moving up. I bought it down here off the, near the bottom of the wick. Moved straight up, it was a no brainer. And so on and so forth. If you back test, if, if you back test the hourly chart of the DAX, you will find that the the chart will move bearish or bullish off the opening price a lot of the time. And I'll show you some stats on that here in a second. Okay, so let's take a look at how this has played out. I lost today. Coca-Cola took me out. I'm going to boycott Coke for like the next month. So I lost $50 there. Here are the four previous days. So in the last five trading days I've had, I was four for five trading that simple plan. So trading one contract, $50, I net $150. So that's okay for five days. Let's go. Let's go back another ten days. Here's between October 1st and October 14th. Five wins in a row. The previous five days, one loss. The previous five days before that. So I was nine for uh, nine wins, one loss in that ten-day period, picking up um, four hundred dollars um, on one con uh, you know per contract traded. The next 10 days, a little worse. I started off with two losses, won the rest of them. So up $300. So that was 25 trades that I have history on. And I'm 21 for 24. Not bad. So you're risking, and every time I'm risking $50, it's one to one against eight to two uh, odds or better. So. You know, I've got a lot more testing. I mean, I've actually gone live in this thing and it's starting to work. So I'm feeling pretty good about this, but you know, I feel better once I have about 40, about 40 trades logged. That gives me, uh, my brother tells me, once you have 40 trades down in test, you have a good statistical basis for, um, for um, going live. So that's basically the uh, DAX trading plan to review it. Um, what you want to do is you want to do your homework first, use whatever uh, indicators you used to determine the direction of the market. Um, you find the first strike price behind the opening, uh, below the opening if you're buying, or above the opening if you're selling. Um, and, oh, I also talked about looking for a spread opportunities. I'm not going to get into that right now because I, Maybe uh, if I'm invited back in a month to share some more information on this, I will. And I'll, I'll have some more information to share on, on spreads. I'm still kind of wrestling with that one, but maybe I'll find some good things to do with spreads. Um, place a limit order. Uh, if, you, if you buy it at market, basically what you're going to wind up doing is, you know, if you, if you react and just click to what an order ticket says, you'll wind up having a risk reward that's more like in the risking 60 to make 40, go 50-50. I'm even testing getting a little bit, I don't know if greedy or is the, greedy is the right word. I'm even testing, you know, risking 55 to make 45. I mean, excuse me, risking 45 to make 55, 40, 60. But I'll play out with that and test. If I don't get filled, I mean, it was a good trade and I was just being a little too, uh, too greedy. 50-50 is fine as long as I've got um, 70 to 70 uh, percent or better odds, and right now I'm at 80. So hopefully this plays out. I'm going to ride out this strategy as long as I can or until it kicks me. Okay, the next one is the um, London Open strategy, and it deals with the pound dollar, and it's based on a really successful. Are there any forex traders here? Type in the yes if you are if you trade for if you have a forex account. Feel like I should play the Jeopardy music. Okay, no forex traders. Well, it's a great forex strategy for those that do uh, the trade forex, and it's called the London Open strategy. And basically, this is a plan. You you have to be an early riser to really do this one well. You want to be up around around three o'clock Central Time or 
four o'clock, uh, three or four o'clock uh, Eastern time. The rules are super simple to follow once again. Basically, this, this, this whole plan is based on the premise that on every trading day, or almost 80% of the trading days, the low or the high of the day will reveal itself between 2 a.m. in the morning and 5 a.m. in the morning Eastern time when, when the London market opens. The opposing high or low of the day will occur between 8 o'clock in the morning and 2 o'clock in the afternoon Eastern time after the opening of the New York market. Since it's very rare to have a market open or close at the same price, it's really nice to have a basically a seesaw proposition. If the low reveals itself in the morning between two and five, excellent chance the high is gonna be revealed uh, after eight o'clock in the morning in the afternoon session. Conversely, if the high, if the high of the day reveals itself in the morning, it's gonna be a bearish market all day long. The low will, will reveal itself after eight in the morning. And it works a lot of the time. I mean, 70, 80% of the time. If you can't find the low or the high between two o'clock and five o'clock in the morning, if it's really choppy for some reason, it's not your day to trade that strategy. But if it reveals itself, go for it. Why does this happen? Okay, at two o'clock in the morning, the European market's open. And at three o'clock, the London market opens and the Bank of England opens. And there's a lot of transactions that need to be uh, cleared. Also at the three o'clock hour, is the last hour of the Tokyo trading strategy. So there's just a ton of financial activity going on within a one hour window. And that's kind of like squeezing water through a crimped hose. Um, it, it just has a tendency to really move the market one direction or another. And if it shows itself, the strategy is in play. Um, so this little chart down here kind of shows you the over where, where the London market starts. You'll see if you look at the very bottom, there's that one hour at three o'clock overlap with the Tokyo market. And then the European market, which isn't shown here, starts at two o'clock. So at eight o'clock in the morning, then the London overlaps with the Europe, with the uh, New York market for another four hours. And it just tend, tend, tends to continue the momentum of the market, whether it's going to be bearish or bullish for the day. So. Here's a little diagram that I, that I did. It's a little bit old, but it works. Um, so all the way to the left, the market opens at two o'clock and you can see the market's just sort of chopping. At three o'clock, the London market opens, chops down a little bit, but then it makes a big move up. It's, we're still not at five o'clock yet. And so I wasn't ready to pull the trigger yet. I didn't like this choppiness right here. I wanted to see what the next move was gonna be. Is this the high of the day? Is this the low of the day? Then the market did a jump and I said, it's going down. So I managed to buy at 17.14 over here. I bought, I usually buy about 40 pips into off the high or the low of the day. The daily range of the pound dollar is about 100 pips or better. So 40 pips kind of puts me into the direction of the trade with usually without threatening me. So I find my proposition here and I put my 50-50 um, strike point in here and just let it ride. Right at this point in time at 50-50 and the way this thing was moving, it would probably ask me to risk 70 to make 30, but watch what happens. The market retraces a little bit, I easily fill, and then off to the races. This, this trade was never in doubt. And at three o'clock in the morning, um, I was good to go. So. You know, it was within my money management strategy. I'm risking fifty dollars. Um, it took off all day long. There was zero stress associated with this trade. I mean, you didn't even have to babysit it, go back to sleep. You wanted to. That's how that trade worked out. So the rules are once again check the economic calendar. So I'm going to go back to the economic calendar today. And what affected the pound and the dollar today? Public se sector net borrowing down, and that's at 4.30 in the morning. Remember, the lower the high usually establishes itself at between two and five in the morning. A lot of British economic news gets released at 4.30 in the morning. So if you know the news is coming, I wouldn't pull the trigger on a trade until I get 
confirmation on where the, where I think the market may be going. These two ones here were sort of in line, but the net borrowing was down, fairly significant, probably going to have an impact on the market. Moving down further today, the, the, big, the, the big report that we had was existing home sales. Turns out at uh, 10 a.m., they were up. So that's two bad pieces of information for the pound. It's probably going to be a bearish day, and here's how it played out. Start with the daily. I always start with my dailies when I do my homework. What's the general trend of the market? So it's moving down. It's been moving down, but lately it's been sort of consolidating. It's actually picking up a little bit of ground right here. Stochastics are kind of moving up, but it's not overbought yet. It's got room to go up, but it's still below the 50-day moving average and riding the T-line. It's just a market you have to be a little bit cautious with. It's slightly bearish, but you know, from on a day-to-day basis, on a day-to-day -day basis, they could, this thing could move up a little bit. It could chop a little bit. Going to an hourly chart. Let's take a look at the, what happened today. At, at between two, here's the two o'clock bar right here. So that's down. That's down hard. Three. Five, Four o'clock bar. So really, this sort of set a downtrend right there, and then the market digested that economic news and took a plummet. So there's your there's your British economic news effect right there. Then it's quiet for a couple hours. It kind of chops back to the T line, and then boom, U.S. housing result reports come in, bullish for the U.S. dollar, bearish for the pound. The opening the the opening is. Uh, the high of itself established itself really at two o'clock, got confirmed again at the opening of the five o'clock bar and down for the rest of the day. So if you had made a decision to sell up in this area right here, you'd be good for the rest of the day. So let's go back to, to the last two to five period. Okay, two o'clock, very bearish move, goes down, hmm. Could this be the low of the day? Let's watch the next bar. I got three hours to make a decision. And by the way, you don't have to get up at two. I usually, I'm usually up around this time frame just to sort of check it. Uh, three o'clock, moving up. Four o'clock, four to five, moving up. I'm thinking the low of the, the, the day has established itself right here. I'm going to buy the market. I'm going to buy it as about 40 pips up off of this bottom if I can get it. And the market runs long for the rest of the day. That's another proposition that's in the money. Let me just do one more. Okay. Big giant move down at two o'clock. I'm going, okay, that's a, that's a bearish move. What's going to happen at three o'clock? Bullish, gap up, next one. I'm thinking Lowe's established itself right here. I'm going to buy about 40 pips up. Off to the good. So that's three straight days on the, on the, on the pound dollar. Forex pairing. And by the way, this, this works. I mean, I focus on the pound dollar, but this really works with the, the British pound and a lot of its currency pairs. Now, if you trade Forex, I mean, there's a strategy where you can pick up more often than not about $500 a day. Um, what you have is a, is a $2,000 standard lot uh, investment in the um, uh, <clears throat> investment. You're going to risk on average, about two hundred to three hundred dollars. Your 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 take profit will be five uh, fifty pips or five hundred dollars, and more often than not, the way this market behaves, within a matter of a couple of hours, you can walk away and pocket a nice little five hundred dollar tip. And on Trading Pub's website, they, you can go under um, forex. There's a you can if you do a little digging, you'll find the um, the forex strategy on the uh, London breakout strategy. When I saw this strategy, I just said, wow. It's a binary decision. I can use this in Nadex. So now I've got two plans in Nadex. I've got the, the pound dollar. I've got the DAX strategy. And they're both really strong, high probability um, uh, trades. So, you know, in summary, binary options can give you a trading edge. I mean, a lot of people. 
you know, don't like them because the upside is capped. And, but, you know, for me, I'm, I'm happy with it. I mean, it's, it's an easy trade for me to make if I have the right strategies in play. I know that I, that I, I can't have a trade run away from me and then have to explain that to my wife. Um, and if I have the right odds in my favor and I find the right strike pay, price, I can do really well a lot. And what it's done for me is it's basically, you know, when I started trading with Madex, I made all the typical, I guess, beginning trader. I get the direction of the market wrong. I give some, you know, I'd have three or four losers. I'd try to, you know, get back to even. And I was really looking for consistency and I knew I'd be able to do it. And once I found a better discipline in money management, risk reward management, in high, in high probability trades. And as I continue in my trading career, I'm sure I'll be able to take this discipline and apply it to uh, other markets as well. Risk is defined, uh, trade can't run away from you. Um, you can see a trade through expiration, but every once in a while, like the Coca, well, the Coca-Cola thing, there was just no help in that one. It dropped 40 points in, in, in one minute. So that just crushed me. <clears throat> for my one of my losses um but if you see a, a market sort of um threatening you you know you can get out if you want to and that's just part of that's just also the discipline of uh, minimizing your losses and letting your winners run uh you can open up an account for as little as a hundred dollars um that doesn't work with my money management or risk reward strategy you can do it 500 um a thousand would be better you have access to a uh, two week free demo. And if you do it, go to nadex.com, sign up, and um, practice these um, two strategies and, and chart it. You'll, you'll be uh, pretty pleasantly surprised. And, you know, you can't get stuff done. And finally, it's for me, it's simple and easy. Well, very good. Well, folks, I want to thank you so much for having me in. And maybe in a month from now, when I have 20 more days of some of this these strategies charted, I'll know I have a statistically strong strategy to play. And, um, you know, Nadex is good for small account. Uh, uh, it's, it's, it's been, it's a good account uh, for small account holders. Um, but, you know, even, even when I grow my account or if I get into other markets, I don't think I'm going to get away from this because personally, you know, I'm not much of a pip counter and stop losses and everything else. I'm still, I'll need to work on my dexterity in those markets, but this one here is determining a, a direction for a market and placing a strategic yes or no bet on a, on a, on a um, strong uh, probability. I feel good about it. Well, folks, thanks very much, and um, it's been a pleasure uh, talking about Nadex.